Welcome to this crash course in the Italian wine region of Marche. You're going to learn exactly what makes Marche a unique wine producing region, what types of Marche wines are out there, and where you should begin your journey in tasting these wines. I'm Tony Margiata. I'm a wine importer and author of Hidden Gems of Italy. My life's mission is to look for and support world-class artisanal wines from Italy, handcrafted in small batches, many of which have been overlooked. My family's from a small village in the Molise region of Southern Italy, and I've been traveling to Italy for over 20 years, immersing myself in Italian wine, food, and culture. So where is Marche? Well, Marche, as you can see on this map up here, it's this green region. It's located sort of, sort of at the beginning of Northern Italy. And I'll explain why that is in just a second. The region's coastline rests on the Adriatic Sea. And while it has some very, very nice beaches, the real beauty of the region rests in the hills and the mountains inland, especially because that's where you're gonna find the vineyards. So what makes Marche unique? Well, Marche was an area known as Picenum in the ancient world during the Iron Age around 3000 years ago. And as you can see on this pre-Roman map, it's, it's a pre-Roman map of tribal languages. There's Northern Picenum up here, you see this white part, Northern Picenum, and on the Southern part is Southern uh, Picenum, okay? The Northern part of the area spoke a Nordic language coming from the north of the peninsula, while the southern part down here uh, part, uh, spoke what was called an Italic, Italic language that puts it in the same family of languages as Latin, which is why I mentioned it a minute ago about Marche as sort of being the beginning of Northern Italy because of the Nordic language that can be traced back over 3000 years ago. The Picentini tribe that lived there uh, was like all tribes on the Italian peninsula. They were conquered by the Romans, of course. And in this document that they were able to excavate, it's called the Edict of Diocletian. Diocletian was a Roman emperor. And on this document, this ancient document was written a record of the prices of all goods sold during that time. So it was mentioned on this document that Picenum, which is now Marche, was considered, um, it was the region that had the most expensive wines of the day. Um, this was also the same region that Pliny the Elder, a Roman author that wrote a book 2000 years ago, he wrote in his book and sort of confirmed this. And he said, um, Picenum is considered uh, one of the most, uh, Picenum is one of the areas that has the most highly rated wines along with a few others. So it's very interesting. Um, basically, Picenum was like uh, probably like Piemonte or Bordeaux today, but in the ancient world. So, you know, while the region is interestingly, it's less known for wine today than other regions in Italy. But clearly, the terroir was there then, it's there now. Um, it's very suitable for making fine wine uh, today, no doubt about it. Many wines today are actually made in honor of the Picentini people like the Rosso Piceno DOC, for example. What else makes Marche unique? Well, one of their major cities is called Urbino, and that's a picture of Urbino uh, in, that you're looking at right now. It's a major city in Marche, and it's particularly famous for its influence on the Renaissance. So while Florence and Tuscany sort of get all the, uh, all the credit for the Renaissance, actually in Marche is very important as well. And Urbino is one of uh, the most important Renaissance cities as well. Even the famous painter Raffaele, Raphael was born there. Uh, how should you think about Marche wines? Just like all other Italian wine regions, uh, you wanna memorize and especially drink, drink lots of wine but learn these native grape varietals that are grown locally in the Marque region. And then the second thing you should do is start to familiarize yourself with the appellations. Don't let these dozens and dozens of appellations overwhelm you. You actually don't have to learn them all, okay? I'm gonna recommend a few in a little bit. So uh, what are some of the native grapes in Marque? Well, uh, let's start with the whites. Um, the whites, actually in Marque are world famous. 
just so you know. Um, less famous for their reds, super famous for their white wines. Uh, the first one, top top, is Verdicchio. This is considered one of the most important varietals in Italy today. It also happens to be the driest white wine in Italy today, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have any fruit notes either. Um, but it's a very important white wine and it's age worthy, which is rare for white varietals. There's only a few others. Uh, another one that just comes to mind immediately is Fiano di Avellino from the Campania region. Make sure you watch the Campania um, video if you're a fan of white wines. Then there's Pecorino, which you will also find in Abruzzo. And so Abruzzo and Marche, they sort of fight over the ownership of Pecorino. But um, Marche has a DOCG appellation for Pecorino, whereas in Abruzzo, the Pecorino wines, while they are absolutely delicious and I love them, they're more of like everyday drinking, whereas the Pecorino DOCG from, uh, uh, from Marche is a little bit more meditative, a little bit more of a serious wine. And then there's Passerina, another very easy drinking, fruity white wine, you should drink young. Um, that's also found in Abruzzo. So Marche and Abruzzo, because they're attached, they sort of share uh, Pecorino and Passerina. And then another white grape that's sort of um, uh, unique to Marche is Bianca May. I believe you can also find a little bit of that in Emilia Romagna, which is the region just north of Marche. And now amongst the reds, there's really only one that you definitely need to check out. But I'll, 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 I'll note here that before I get into the local indigenous varietals, there's also, if you're, if you're into Montepulciano and Sangiovese, those grapes are um, flourishing all over the region. Um, Le Marche is lesser known for its Sangiovese and Montepulciano wines, but you should definitely, definitely check them out. Um, so back to the sort of unique local reds, Lacrima. This is the one you've got to try if you try nothing else. Um, it's a very, very aromatic, medium-bodied wine, lots of fruits, no reason not to like it. And then the second red is very particular, Vernaccia Nera, which is a red varietal, but they pretty much only make a sparkling red wine with it. Sparkling red wine, and it's sweet. So it's sweet, sparkling red wine. So if you've got a sweet tooth, um, this is definitely something worth, worth checking out. I'll mention it again in a second. Here are the maps, the um, Appalachian maps of Le Marque. Uh, there are several DOCGs uh, worth investigating. And then it's got a fair amount of DOCs here on the left. Which ones do I recommend? Uh, among the white wines, you definitely need to check, check out the Ofida DOCG. This is the Pecorino DOCG that I was talking about. Ofida is the, uh, the area where the finest Pecorino grapes are coming from. It's an age-worthy wine, so it's very different from the Abruzzese wines. Then we have Verdicchio di Matalica. There's a DOC and a DOCG version. You'll pay a little bit more for the DOCG version, but um, that's worth checking out. And then there's Verdicchio de Castelliesi. Okay, so these are both... Um, uh, Verdicchio wines um, just coming from different appellations and you, you should definitely uh, check out both of them. Then we go to the reds, Lacrima di Morro d'Alba, DOC. Sometimes this gets confused, this wine. Um, some people think it's coming from uh, Piemonte because it, it comes from Alba, but it, it doesn't. This is actually an appellation specific and unique to Marche, Lacrima di Moro d'Alba. And Lacrima means tear in Italian. Definitely, definitely among, if you don't try any other red, that's the one that I would pick. And then of course, there's the Rosso Piceno, which I had mentioned earlier, which is made in honor of the Picentini tribe that lived in Marche 3000 years ago. It's a blend of Montepulciano and Sangiovese. So for those of you who love Sangiovese and you love Montepulciano, it's a blend put together, okay? Uh, what's not to like? And then finally, this last one here, this, this is the Vernaccia Nera. Oh, that's a misspelling right there. Um, let's see here, that's a misspelling. Anyway, not so important. Vernaccia Nera, the Serra Petrona, DOCG. 
This is the sparkling red sweet wine. Um, this is a great wine to go with uh, desserts, especially with um, dry pastry types of desserts to kind of um, counteract with the sparkling sweetness. Definitely try for the white wine. Get the Verdicchio di Matelica DOC. And then for the red wine, I've mentioned it several times already, Lacrima di Morro d'Alba DOC. Definitely, definitely uh, seek that one out. And I'll mention again, as I have in the other videos, if you can find a small producer of, of these wines, I would definitely go with one of those. A small batch that's made 50,000 bottles or less will really, really capture the uniqueness of the varietal and the appellation from where it comes from. You know, if you happen to find a wine like this and it's made uh, from an industrial producer, which is very easy uh, to find with Verdicchio, there are many industrial producers of Verdicchio, um, don't uh, put a check mark and say, okay, I've tried that. I liked it. I didn't like it. Uh, before you make up your mind whether you like this great varietal or you like the Appalachian, please try an artisanal version. It might change your mind. And so uh, make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV. There's going to be more videos coming out about Italian wine regions, art artisanal Italian wines, Italian wine basics, all, all of that and much more. And remember, great wines are not made in great numbers.